Hello and welcome to State Matters. I'm your host, Matt Miratori. Today we have with us the Senior Business Advisor at the University of Massachusetts Amherst and also the co-host of a television show called the Fox Robbins Business Show. Mr. Cliff Robbins, welcome, welcome. Hello, Thank you for you having sir? us here today. Thank you. Thank and you we are inviting. in the new year now, so we are in a different studio. Where it's, a, it's a special occasion to have you here, so we're really glad to have you here. Thank you. I appreciate it. So we always start off our show uh, learning who our guests are. So tell our guests who probably don't know who you are, who you are. Well, my name is Cliff Robbins, and it has been all my life. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, born and raised in Boston, educated in Boston. Um, you went to Northeastern, I see. I went to Northeastern. So did I. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Another I, one, Betty. Another one add to the list. Every uh, guest I have on seems to go to Northeastern. Big school. You yeah. know what? It's amazing how many people I run into and they say, where'd you go to school? I started electrical engineering. Mm -hmm. I call it my misspent youth. <laughs> <coughs> went on got an MBA and some advanced degrees once I got into business. But my co-op job was with uh, a, an electrical uh, manufacturer. Okay. It's now Westinghouse. Back then it was called Federal Pacific. Mm -hmm. And I became a sales engineer. I got into selling rather than into the green eye shades, you know, calculating the speed of an electron from point A to point B. That was boring. I was out in the field selling products. At a very young age, 25 years old, mm -hmm. I decided to start my own business. Wow. I had the bug. <clears throat> and the family was young, so it was a good opportunity for you to give it a shot. And the senior vice president of the company said, if it fails, come on back. You're a good guy. I'd hire you back in a minute. So that was a nice safety net. And I did that for three years, and then I bought a little electrical distributor. At the time, was doing about a million three. I grew that to twenty-two million dollars, uh -huh. and went from six employees to a hundred employees. And where was this? That was in Rhode Island and uh, southeastern yep. Massachusetts, yep. <clears throat> and started a telecommunications company in the uh, mid 1980s uh, called Total Systems, and. I was selling cell phones for $2,000 a piece. <laughs> and wow. if you were not in Boston or Providence proper, you didn't even have a signal, okay? Once you left Providence and I would go to my house. Uh, down how the big were they? <laughs> Matt, they yeah, were the size yeah. of a briefcase. <clears throat> I still have it and show it to my students yeah. today because yeah. I'm teaching at Mass Maritime part-time. Yeah. <clears throat> and I open up the top, you whip out an antenna like you're calling in an airstrike. <laughs> you pull out <clears throat> this giant brick. You know, and yeah. the whole thing is battery. And of course, we've moved on yeah. from there. And uh, went down to Salve Regina, started working on my PhD down in Newport. I had a, a place in Newport at the time. And uh, then I got a job as a visiting lecturer at Bentley College then, now it's Bentley University. Mm -hmm. I don't know why, because it's mm -hmm. just a business school. Right, right. It was a good business school. And I was doing that, and uh, I had a home in Charlestown at the time. I had my home is now in West Barnstable, had that. <clears throat> and you can't get to Bentley from either of those locations. Mm -hmm. It's impossible. Mm -hmm. And the University of Massachusetts contacted me and said, we really would like to open up southeastern Massachusetts, and we'd love to have you as a business advisor. So I thought, well, <clears throat> a lot easier, you know, driving uh, from my house to Cape Cod Chamber of Commerce, where they gave me a free office, and counseling small business people because, the, as the state director said, you've got all that experience. I said, you mean scars? Yes, mm, yeah, right. I do have. <laughs> and so I took the job kind of as an interim thing. That was 17 years ago. <laughs> so I've enjoyed it immensely. Yeah. I've worked with well over 3,000 entrepreneurs now. Um, so tell us, tell the folks what it is. So it's <coughs> it's the. Uh, What's the, it's, what's the name of it? It's the... Um, it's confusing as heck. Small Business Development Center? Yes, the Massachusetts, yeah. the MSBDC. Yeah. I'm a marketing professor, and I'm big on branding. Yeah. And they really ruined our opportunity to brand us. They do a beautiful job with SCORE, Service Corps Retired Executives. Yeah. Yeah. And those folks are volunteers, great people there, like Bill Fox. And we're the MSBDC. Yeah. Now, the MSBDC has been around since 1980. Now, we are, we're paid. We're paid, we're full-time business advisors. The SBDC is funded through the SBA. Okay. That provides 50% of our funding. Okay. 25% of our and funding. the SBA for folks at home, Small Business Association. Exactly, yep. Small Business Association. 25% of our funding comes from you, the state mm -hmm. of Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. And another 25% comes from the institution to which we're attached. Now, the state of Massachusetts has 
the University of Massachusetts Amherst, which is my primary employer, mm -hmm. as the lead institution. Mm -hmm. But other institutions have had contracts, subcontracts, to work with the SBDC in the state of Massachusetts, Boston College, Carroll School of Business, uh, Clark University still has a contract, Salem State University oh. still, you know. So there are other schools. We're working right now with a few schools that I can't even mention, mm -hmm. possibly taking them on as institutions where we will go and counsel small businesses. Are there any in the southeast region, <coughs> Cape Cod, South Coast? No, there's not. Nothing there's yet. me. That's you. That's <laughs> you. Okay. And I'm. So what do you do? Tell us what you do. You give free business advice. That's what we do. We we provide. People will come to us. People will call the office. They'll they'll say, I want to start a business. Great. I will meet them in Fall River at the Chamber of Commerce, New Bedford at the, at the Economic Development. Mayor Mitchell gave us a free office there. I meet them at the Cape Cod, uh, Cape Cod Chamber of Commerce. I go to Plymouth Chamber of Commerce right okay. down here at pretty much every Wednesday. Okay. And I will sit with them and I will help them get into business. And I it's will free for them? Free. No cost. There's no charge. Okay. Never a charge okay. for what we do. <clears throat> I will help them write their business plan. Oh. I will help them put together the numbers that will convince a lender that they'll be able to pay them back. That's, that's the real key to showing a lender that how you're going to pay them back. Mm -hmm. uh, I will help them start their business. And we're measured by the SBA as to how many businesses we help get started that actually file their papers and start a DBA, start an LLC, start an S Corp. We're also... Um, Measured by the amount of finance we help people get, uh, we have I have to get help people get about ten million a year in finance to start or grow their business. That's but, collectively. Collectively, okay. right now, about half of the companies with which I work are already in business, okay. and they want to grow the business, and so they'll come and see me, and I will take them through a marketing plan, a business plan and give, be, be a guide for them to show them how to grow their business profitably. And the bottom line to what we do is we create jobs. I mean, it's just that mm -hmm. simple. And they measure us by how many jobs are created. Now, we don't even do the research. Quite frankly, the state of Massachusetts does their own. And every year, the state will look at and say, for every dollar the state of Massachusetts has invested in this program, what are we getting back in new tax revenues? It's never been be below $3. So a three to one return, I've seen it as uh, high as seven to one. Uh, That's a darn good investment. Now, yeah. a couple of years ago, the state director named me as state star again. And I got a free trip to San Diego. I'm on the boat in San Diego, big, beautiful yacht. And uh, there like 70 people there. I said, wait a minute, there's only 50 states. Well, as it turns out, I found out California does have three or four different centers, SBDC centers, Texas being huge has a few. But I had dinner with some folks from Colombia and Argentina mm. because those countries have looked at our MSBDC model and said, it's a good investment. And with the world being flat, that's a metaphor, of mm -hmm. course, right. that the world is much smaller because of this thing called the Internet, mm -hmm. you know, which is now is huge. Um, they can do a lot of business all over the world. So there are, there's an SBDC advisor across from me from Argentina, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's a great program. I work with the best people I've ever worked with in my life. The Melinda Ailes, the Jill Beresfords. I mean, these are people that work with me in southeastern Massachusetts now because we've expanded so much. We have people covering other parts of it. These are the brightest business people I've ever met. They really are sharp. And... And again, it's a free service. Now, in their infinite wisdom, the SBA and the federal government says we are not, we have no advertising budget. We can't go out and advertise. I was just going to say, how do people find out? I mean, I've been in small business for a number of years, and I didn't know about you too <coughs> recently, actually. Don't get me started on how stupid it is. Okay. <laughs> uh, my wife's a psychotherapist, and she's helping me become more outspoken, and she's doing a heck of a that's good job. Good right? job. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> I mean, we have no marketing budget. I think it's crazy. Yeah. Uh, but to be perfectly honest with you, after doing this for 17 years, I mean, I've got, my schedule is pretty full of clients mm -hmm. because everybody does know, oh, you know, you're starting a business, go see this guy, Cliff Robbins, mm -hmm. you know, or, gee, you want to grow your business? Well, just call this number and, you know, you get a free appointment. Mm -hmm. He'll either meet you at the chamber. We try to be within a half an hour mm -hmm. of any client, potential client. 
or he'll come right to your business. If you have a place of business, mm -hmm. I can go there. Mm -hmm. And uh, like I say, 45% or so mm -hmm. of the companies that I'm working with to grow their business. Of course, in 2007 and 2008, when the economy really fell, mm -hmm. that number of comp existing companies I was working with went up quite a bit because there were so many companies in trouble. Yeah. And like I would go in and I'd say to them, look, you're not big enough to worry about this general economy, you know. I said, I had a sign over my first business. I refused to participate in your recession. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's, it's not like you own half the market, right, you know. Right, I mean, right. just a small business. And yeah. if you do things right, you will make your competitors suffer, certainly, mm -hmm. because you're going to take what little business is available away from them. But if you're providing the value you need to provide, you mm -hmm. can do that. About what percentage of the businesses have you seen over your career that are new and ones that are existing that come to you for the first time? About 50-50. 50-50, About 50-50. Yeah, yeah, yeah. About yeah. half of the folks that come to see me want to start a business. Yeah. They have a dream. And we are, you know, I'm responsible, I think, for 65 starts a year. Okay. In other words, they measure everything I do, you know, and I like it. Mm -hmm. I like it. And they do the measuring. I don't, I don't mm -hmm. do anything. They, they send emails to all of our clients. They call some of our clients. I think they try to call like 10% of the clients. And some of the clients actually are wondering who's calling and mm -hmm. asking about Cliff Robbins. Are you happy with him? Who's this? You know, mm -hmm. and, oh, well, this is Amherst calling, and we're just doing the check to make sure you're happy. Mm -hmm. And we try to maintain a 97% oh. approval rate, which is oh. quite good, and we do. Yeah. We do. Like I say, Matt, I'll tell you, I work with some of the smartest people I've ever, I've mm -hmm. ever known. As mm -hmm. far as business goes, Melinda Ailes is an ex-banker. She was in banking for 27 years. I can't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> She'll beat the heck out of me if I tell you. But, you know, I have a client who, who has a problem with their bank or, you know, is trying to get money and having trouble with the bank. And I bring her in, and, I mean, she just puts the deal together. She speaks bank is what I say. Mm -hmm. And Jill Beresford, very similar. She was a turnaround expert. So if I have a company that's having some trouble, I'll bring Jill in. And she helps them turn mm -hmm. the business uh -huh. around, make it profitable again. So we've got some great people. What sort of companies are there that you've dealt with? You name it. Uh, I, I, I do this thing when I'm going to do a seminar. We offer a lot of free seminars, mm -hmm. a couple every month, someplace in southeastern Massachusetts. I run a scroll, A, B, C, D, just the alphabet. And when the A goes up, and, and while the scroll is just running before I begin to speak, I have Johnny Cash singing, oh, I've been everywhere, man, <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> Accountants, attorneys, hey, uh, acrobats, B, B, barbers, C, D, all the way down yeah, to Z. Yeah. And I used to get to Z and I'd stop and I'd say to the audience, well, gee, can anybody think of an industry or a business beginning with a Z? I don't think I've done anything in with a Z. Mm. And it was Bill Fox that told me, have you ever done a Zymergist? What is that? That's somebody that brews beer or wine for a oh. living. I said, guess what? I've done A to Z. Yeah, I've okay. got a lot okay. of Zymergists. Okay. And, okay. I can na and you know the names, quite frankly, but again, yeah. everything yeah. I do is confidential. Yeah. Yeah. So I've done A to Z. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I now have two Zs because about a year ago I had a Zumba goddess. Contract. Oh, yeah, Zumba. <laughs> so I got two sure, Zs. Sure. Well, why, do you think, you know, <coughs> why do you think businesses fail? I mean, if there's a service like this out there, wow. Why does that happen? Because they don't come for the service. Yeah, why, why that's not? The Here, there, is it too late by the time they realize no. they need the help? Well, it what depends. Is it? I've had a few that came in too late. You know, I've had people come in and say, you know, I borrowed, I borrowed up all I could, and I used up the equity in my home, and my credit cards are maxed out, and I need money. And I look at it, and I say, you haven't made money in six years. You don't need money. You need a business model that works, you know. And sometimes, on rare occasion, thank God, it is too late. But most yeah. of the time, it's not too late for okay. us to turn things around. So they should come to you if they're struggling then, no Absolutely. matter what. They should yeah. come to us before they struggle. Why do they, they feel that? Wonder, I'm a fanatic reader of business books. If I showed you my office, I have over a 1,000 books. Mm. Books. I do a lot online, too, now. But I still like to have the paperback book, and I highlight, and I rip and I write BS in some of the pages. <laughs> That's bovine secretion. Okay. <clears throat> and I still like, but there was a book written probably 30 years ago called The E-Myth by Michael Gerber. And what he's referring to is the entrepreneurial myth. And one of the basic tenets of the book is that people will start their small business because they have some technical skill. They know how to write software. They know how to cook. So they're going to start a restaurant. But those skills don't transfer into managing and running a business. 
Are they good at their marketing? Do they know how to create customers, which is job one? If they don't know how to do that, then the best cook in the world isn't going to be successful in a restaurant. The best cook in the world isn't going to be successful in a restaurant if he doesn't understand how to manage people, if he doesn't know how to financially make sure his cost of goods stays in line. You know, there are so many other skills to running a business that have absolutely nothing to do with cooking, which is the basic of a restaurant, mm -hmm. right? Or writing software, which could be one of the basic offerings of a technology company. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean they're good at running their own business. Yeah. I had a gentleman who came to see me, and apparently he was a very, very good plumber. And he bought the plumbing business. But he wasn't a very good business person. And so we had to work very hard to make sure he understood the financial side of the business. The thing that I see, the biggest failure that I see in the small business community is not paying attention to those numbers on a regular basis, or even worse, not understanding what they're telling them. You know, because those numbers are the language that your small business is speaking. If you're not looking at your cash flow, oh my goodness, cash flow is, is king to a business. I, I bet most don't even look at that. They don't even know what it means. Yeah. Most of them don't even know what it means. Yeah. They don't look at their balance sheet. They don't see that their equity position maybe is going south. They don't look at their P&L. Uh, <clears throat> if you're a client of mine and I come in to see you and you don't tell me your sales last month, you're in trouble. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know people that have come, we fill out a request for counseling the minute they come in, right? And one of the questions I will ask besides, is your is a corporation, LLC, who owns it, 50% women? One of the questions I'll ask is, do you know what your revenues were last year? You'd be shocked, because I'm shocked every time. I say, well, no, I don't know. You don't even know what your revenues mm. were last year, let alone whether you made money. Oh, well, uh, and, I didn't make any money in my tax and, returns. And nowadays with, you know, QuickBooks, I mean, people use QuickBooks, so it's so easy to do. It's so simple. Push a button. Yeah. But you need to understand what those numbers are yeah. telling you in the trends. And I teach a course for Southeastern Economic Development, the CDC in CDC, Taunton. Yeah, yeah. And I've been doing that for 15 years. And I teach financial literacy. They offer a course for free all over, well, all over eastern Massachusetts, southeastern Massachusetts and Rhode Island. And when they do it, I teach the afternoon program, which is financial literacy. And I teach, I t take people through cash flow, balance sheet, income statement, or P&L. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. In the morning, they're there, you know, talking about starting a business and marketing. There'll be 25 people in the room. In the afternoon, I'd be lucky to keep 10 of them. Really? They leave. Mm -hmm. And I say, shame on them. Because yeah. this is the most important thing. Yeah. This is about numbers is what your well, business... I, I, think, I think what you say is probably really true. <coughs> you know, you, if, you wanna, if you're a cook, you want to do a restaurant. If you're a plumber or electrician. Exactly. But the financial side, do you, do you think it's, it's, it's good for uh, somebody like people like that to maybe get a part-time bookkeeper or something to help do should. that? Absolutely always should. Because there's park, plenty of bookkeepers out there that are looking for one day a week, two days a week, or whatever. There are women, you know, home with their kids. Home with, that, yeah, they that can do it anywhere. That's right. They don't and, have to go to know, an 20, office. Right. 20, 25 bucks an hour, 30 bucks yeah, an hour. Right. Yeah, they'll come in for two hours a week mm -hmm. and keep your books clean. Because yeah. garbage in, garbage out. Yeah. If you don't have the right numbers, you can't manage your business mm -hmm. correctly. You, you're not on real time. So absolutely, they're not bookkeepers. Yeah. They should work with their bookkeeper on mm -hmm. a regular basis. Right, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are some of the things you need to be to be an entrepreneur, do you think? Guts. <laughs> That's good. To uh, you know, there's a lot of all, people have those ideas or will, or, or and will they don't, to do it, but they don't. Yeah, they just can't pull a trigger yeah, and yeah. go and do it. And I had a lot of those come to me, and after sitting with me, felt more confident that they could start their business and run it. Mm -hmm. And they'll always say to me, uh, can I come back? I say, if you can stand the beating, come on back, <laughs> you know? And they come back, and I get, we, we're also measured by long-term engagements. We have to have a certain number of long-term engagements, which is five or more hours with a client a year. We give a client an hour at a time. And so we've had, we have a lot of clients that come back and continue. I've had clients working with me for my entire 17 years, yeah. quite frankly. I meet some of them once a year, go over their numbers, you know, see that they're doing well, and then see you next year, you know. So... These people keep coming back because they want to grow their business. They want to learn all of these other things that they have to learn besides knowing how to, you know, fry mm. a pancake. Mm. You talked about grants earlier. 
Yes. Talk about the grants that are available to small, you talked about seed um, you know, funding sources, et cetera. Talk yeah. about that for the businesses and through your program. Yeah. As far as grants go, there are only grants for nonprofits that I know of. Okay. I do have a lot of people, minorities, females, come to me and say, I want my grant. There is none. Okay. There is no grant to start a pizza parlor. Not that I know of. There's no grant to start a gift shop because you're a woman. I'm sorry. I've had so many people argue the point with me. And in 17 years, I've never found one. But I always say to them, but look, I could be wrong. You know, if you find a grant to start your little retail shop, please call me right away. My wife's a woman. <laughs> Never got a call. Okay, so there isn't any. And that guy with the question marks that sells you the book and shows you how to get your grant money, it's a total scam. Total scam. I've had people spend as much as $3,000 with mm -hmm. his organization and get nothing. So, mm -hmm. now, if you're a nonprofit, that's a different story. If you're a 501c3 nonprofit, certainly there are grants, save the wheels, save the children, sure, to do good work, mm -hmm. but not for a pizza parlor and not for a retail shop, not for a normal, small, for-profit business. There are no grants. So what do people do then? They need to, they need to pass the five C's of credit, okay? And that's what I talk about. The first one is their credit rating. They've got to go borrow money, all right? Uh, maybe, unless they have the cash, certainly, to start the business. Just had a woman start a business, 70000 bucks she put into the business, but she had the cash. She had the savings, mm -hmm. so she didn't, need a, she didn't need a loan. But normally, uh, I'm working with some folks now. One gentleman who wants to start a restaurant, been a restaurateur for 20 years, and has actually run restaurants, uh, so he's got all the experience. I'm helping him write his business plan. His credit rating is good. He's ready to put in What's a good credit rating? 700, Around okay, 700, yeah. and 700 is decent, yeah. 7, 750 is very good. Yeah. Sometimes Southeastern, folks like Southeastern Economic Development seed, seed. Yeah. they'll drop as low as 650 if you've got good collateral, mm -hmm. which is another C, you've got good credit. If we show them a business... And collateral for people at home is? Their home is collateral. The business itself is collateral. If they buy the building, that's good collateral mm -hmm. in the eyes of a bank. If they're doing leasehold improvements, in other words, if they're going to build out a, somebody else's space, that's not the best collateral in the world, obviously, because you're putting the money into somebody else's building. Mm -hmm. So you got your, your credit rating, collateral, your contribution. A lender generally is looking for around 25%. There is a special program the SBA has that you could put up 10% if it's what is called a 504 loan. And a 504-backed SBA loan is available to you to buy either a piece of capital equipment or a building. Only those two things. And, okay. and if, if you've got a business, you're running your business, and you say, gee, I want to buy the building, building's a half million bucks, you've only got to put up 50 grand. The bank will loan you mm -hmm. 450 because the SBA is guaranteeing the bank 80% of that loan or got some it. percentage in there. So, yeah, collateral is an issue, credit. The most important one... And the most important thing to any business is cash flow. I mean, cash... Talk about that a little bit, yeah. Cash flow? I don't think people really understand that. <coughs> they don't that. understand it. They, they look at their bank account, they say, oh, I've got $5,000 in it. That's good. I'm okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I tell people the only thing dumber than running your business out of your checkbook is running your business because you still got some right. checks in the book, <laughs> right. okay? That's really, <laughs> yeah. really crazy. Now, cash flow is... Uh, and I explain this in my own unique way. You got your Gazintas and you got your Gazautas, okay? <laughs> and the Gazintas got to be bigger than the Gazautas. And the Gazintas got to come in before you can put the Gazautas out, okay? So cash flow is simply timing. When is the cash coming in? The example I use is when I bought that million three business, I didn't have even an MBA at that point. Uh, so I had to learn how to be a business person, right? Uh, I went from $1.3 million to $2.4 million in sales. And my accountant called me up in December and said, you know, you're going to be showing a profit of about $300,000. We've got to send ninety grand to the IRS or you're going to get killed. I said, I'm broke. I have no money. I said, what are you telling me? I was worried that I was making a profit. I had no cash. He said, of course you don't. You had a million three business. You grew to $2.4 million. Your receivables doubled, didn't they? 
I said, well, yeah, of course they double because I double my sales. I had accounts receivable that are paid around 30 to 45 days. He said, so you got another couple hundred thousand invested of your cash in those receivables, but you can't write a check for it, can you, until that check comes in? I said, that's why I'm sweating every tenth of the month, hoping the check comes in so I can pay my people and sweating filing payrolls. He said, by the way, you took on that tool line, didn't you? I said, yeah, it's selling like crazy. How much of that is in inventory? I said, over 100 grand. He says, is it paid for? I said, yeah, more of your cash. Invested in inventory, invested. So profit isn't cash, and cash isn't profit. Cash is cash. Cash is there's money coming in faster than it's going out. And you have to plan, especially for a star business, as the Boston Consulting Group calls it, that's growing profitably. Mm -hmm. That's going to eat cash. You're going to have to figure out, how am I going to fund it? And I funded it by increasing debt with the bank. And, of course, the bank was happy as a lark to give me a bigger loan to continue to grow the business. So you borrowed money to pay the taxes. Exactly. Had to borrow money, had to get a line of credit, pay mm -hmm. the taxes, had to go from my base loan, had to increase the base loan, and then I continued to grow the company from 2.4 up to, you know, $22 million. But I had to do it with a cash plan. It's profitable, mm -hmm. yes, but it takes cash. I need more buildings. I need more people. I need more inventory. I'm going to generate more sales. Therefore, I'm going to generate more accounts receivable. I'm making profit, but I'm running out of cash all the yeah, time. Yeah. So they're not the same issue. They're not yeah. the same thing. And I went to the MIT Enterprise Forum probably about 10 years ago because I still love to do that. And the director put on the board CFIMITYM. CFIMITYM. He said, that's the single most important thing to a nascent business, especially a starting, beginning business. He says, that stands for cash flow is more important than your mother. <laughs> well, that's funny. That's right. In the, uh, in the couple <coughs> of minutes we have left, tell us, you, you talked about bank loans and all that. Tell, how mm. hard is it to get a bank loan? It's not that people? hard. Again, if you pass the five C's yeah. of credit, it's quite easy mm. to get a bank loan. Now, don't go to Bank America. They're not interested in your 100000 200000 loan. You go to a small, medium-sized bank, and I could name, a, you know, small, medium-sized banks that like we were. Eastern Bank or Rockland Trust Eastern does something. a very yeah. good job. Our Rockland Trust is yeah. very good, very, very good job. We've got a lot of little lenders, yeah. what, Webster, Webster, and they're yep. really yep. interested in helping the small business community. That's their niche. Why, why, yeah, why them and not the, the Bank of they're America? They're not interested. The, the bigger banks aren't interested in citizens and Bank of America. They're not they're interested. They're looking for the, the larger They're looking for the bigger loans. They're looking for the $20 million loan. It's kind of mm -hmm. like the same difference between an angel investor and a venture capitalist group. Mm -hmm. uh, venture capitalists, they're looking to do a $10, $20 million deal. They're not looking to put 500000 into a risky business. That's for angels to look at. Mm -hmm. So you get angels, and then you step it up to venture capitalists. You got the small credit unions, medium sized banks. They're interested in helping small business. The big giant national banks, they're not interested. Mm -hmm. That's that's not their that's not their sweet spot. And do you help people go through the bank process? Oh, all the as time. Well? Yeah. 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 I help them a lot of a lot of bankers will send folks, they'll go in to see a banker, and those bankers will say, Go see Cliff Robbins and he will help you put this business plan together and they know that hopefully when I get it back to them it'll make sense for them. Mm -hmm. And it makes it easier mm -hmm. for them to put the approval through. And it's that seed, that's Rockland Trust, that's Webster, that's, and I could go on and on and name yeah. 20 yeah. more little banks that we work with on a regular basis, Cape Cod Five. These are all good banks. Mm -hmm. These are all banks that are interested in that target mm -hmm. market. Well, the, you know, the, the saying goes that small businesses are the backbone <coughs> of the economy. Well, 99% of the businesses out there are small businesses, mm -hmm. and over 50% of the employed people in the country small work for yeah. small business. Yeah. Yeah. And it is the backbone, and that is what drives the economy. Yeah. The growth of small, it's not the growth of big business that drives right. the economy, it's right. the growth of small business that drives the yeah. economy. They yeah. create the jobs. Yeah. Big business is actually, in many years, cutting jobs because of technology, yeah. and those people have to go to work mm -hmm. someplace, and they either go to work for or start yeah. their own small business. You know, and I know we, we just finished the holidays, and right be when the holidays are starting, we you know, shop local. Big it's huge. We should always shop local. As much Absolutely. as we can shop local, yeah. because they are the backbone, they employ so many people. So, and but, they give back to that local community. Yeah, They're your yeah, neighbor. Yeah. True. Well, thank you so much for, Matt, thank uh, you, for coming on. I really Very appreciate nice that. Here. Love to have you back again sometime. Anytime. So, so we appreciate you all watching from home today. Uh, we hope you enjoyed it. We want to thank the folks here at PAC TV for another great show. And we'll see you next time on State Matters. Thanks for watching.